Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. We are going to review Waves, directed by Trey Edward Schultz, who, if you aren't really aware of this guy or he's not on your radar, get him on your radar. He is one of the greatest filmmakers working today, easily. One of the ones I'm most excited about. If you haven't seen the movie Krisha, we both highly recommend that. Krisha is just one of the most impressive debut films you will ever see. It's a filmmaker who out of the gate was just thinking about all the ways that he could immerse you in his story with visual and sound techniques. And he holds up to that with waves. It just seems like from this movie and all of his other ones that he is just absolutely invested in the power of movies and also the power of sound. I mean, my God, from a visual and auditory standpoint, the movie is maximalist. It grabs a hold of you and like whips you around like you're at an amusement park. If only it was that fun. I mean, it kind of feels like I'm no. just literally getting like beat. The whole movie, I was like, this is just like the most maximalist thing I've ever seen. You know, the cinematography is vibrant and like the camera will just like move all over the place. The editing is purely motivated by emotion. Similar in the way that Terrence Malick approaches his movies and that he's going for like, what is the emotion behind the scene? But Trey Edward Schultz, what he's trying to do is much more visceral even. Trey Edward Schultz builds up the first half of this movie to this incredible crescendo where you're totally immersed in the anxiety and terrifying emotions that the character that you're watching is feeling, you get the sense of what it's like to be completely lost in your own head, in your own feelings, because of the filmmaking, the, the sheer power of it, the way that he's using you know, sound, visuals, the editing, cinematography, everything is like bombarding you. But if it works for you, you will be so swept up by this midway climax in the film. I will say that that moment was one of the best things I've ever seen in a movie. Like, it was like, hands down, like I was like completely shook. And I just couldn't believe that Trey Edward Schultz was able to pull that off. I don't know if there's anybody else who could possibly do it. And that's why he's such an exciting filmmaker. He can evoke things in you that you couldn't get elsewhere. Like I couldn't have felt what I felt from this movie through anything else. The first half and what it builds up to by the middle of the movie, is incredibly devastating and something that I also, you know, I was shook by it. The movie had such a hold on me at that point. I will definitely take away that part of the movie like forever as one of the most felt experiences at the movies. But it was like being in the second person, almost like I'm at a Disney ride going through something, but it's not, you know, a fun ride. You I keep won't... comparing it to amusement parks. This is not It's no no, it's fun. it's not a fun ride. <laughs> Panic attack inducing. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's an incredible. I, I am honestly like speechless by a lot of this movie. Like what it takes you through. I just have no words. I truly don't. Except for Trey Edward Schultz. Those are the only Trey words Schultz. that you can say there. If you like this movie, uh, once again, I will mention, watch the movie Krisha. There's a lot of similarities between that movie and the first half of this movie. Please watch Krisha. Thank you. The sound mixing. Oh my sound God. design in this movie. Give it an Oscar, I have folks. never seen a movie use music in this way. It doesn't just use music tracks. It's not like Martin Scorsese. He's going through like the hits of the 80s. Every piece of music used in the movie is part of the sound design almost. And when there's not music, the sound design is like music. And we're talking like music with lyrics, by the yeah. way. The way that a song will be like stuck in your head or like moving in your head is how the music is in the movie. It is used to the greatest effect in every scene, no matter how quiet or how loud it is. And just hats off to the sound design because it was so innovative and so maybe even groundbreaking. Like there were a couple elements of this movie, including the sound design, where I couldn't even like process like what was going on yeah. like with the filmmaking. You don't know I if just you're hearing knew... the score yeah. or a song. The role that the music plays, I mean, you, music is an important part of this movie because for one thing, it's like what is important to the characters and the music means something to people and especially, you know, young people. I think that this film captures like what it's like to have a song that represents a point in your life. The visuals are also quite musical, you could say. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, like in the way that Terrence And, and also it. like the editing, everything about this movie from a technical standpoint is musical. There's just so much 
to appreciate in terms of craft. This movie, to me, was like one of the most well acted movies of the year. And I'm talking like I want Oscar nominations. I want Oscar I won't nominations. Receive them, unfortunately. In a lot I don't think I will receive them. Kelvin Harrison Jr., after this and loose, he's fucking amazing. Sterling K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown is incredible. Like perfect in the role. Like he couldn't bring more to this character. You've seen Stern Fathers in films, but Sterling K. Brown does it in a whole like Yeah, like there's like another level. life to it. Because you always see that it's coming from a place of love. He should get an Oscar nomination. I don't think he will. You because seen... I feel like Waves overall is not really a movie for the Oscars. Well, after watching it, like this is not an Oscars movie. Other great performances, Taylor Russell. Never seen her before. She's excellent. Yeah, she has an amazing scene in this movie. I mean, there's one scene in particular I'm thinking of with her and Sterling K. Brown that's, like, yeah. incredible acting. Like, some of the best acting, like, maybe ever. Okay. I don't know. I feel like this movie has, like, moonlight-level acting, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> and I think that you, we also see a scene or two like that from the mom in the movie. I think the whole family is, like, so perfect and then there's Lucas Hedges. And then Lucas Justin. Hedges was hilarious. And we had just seen him in Honey Boy, where it's very jarring to see Lucas Hedges in Honey Boy and then see him in this movie. Like, it took me 30 seconds, and I was like, wait, Lucas Hedges is the next Daniel Day-Lewis. He <laughs> somehow transformed from a young, crazy Shia LaBeouf into, like, a person that I, like, want to be friends with, like, relate to. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, I kind of, like, know who that is. And, like, this it's, like, such a natural character that you immediately, like, feel an affinity for. Like, oh, I like him. He doesn't seem like the kind of actor who transforms. But he really did. Like, he's a different person here. He has the awkward demeanor of a high schooler. I don't know how he channeled that within himself, but, like, he went back in a time machine to like bring that out <laughs> he de-aged for this movie i am convinced yep. i sort of have to separate this movie in terms of my feedback which is that i felt differently about the first half and the second half the more i reflect back on it the harder time i have putting the two together and feeling like the second half is a proper continuation of the first half the first half is perfect in itself the second half seems to be going in a different direction, which I welcome. If this is the direction that the filmmaker wants to take me on, I want to be a part of that journey, wherever he wants to take me. But I couldn't quite understand why we went in this direction. You know, for me, and I think for most people, like this film is going to peak in the middle. It's slightly disappointing, but this is not a totally bad thing. You might not be quite sure what to make of it, but we spent a lot of time debating what it means or what it might add up to like what the intention what does the together? second half like give to the first half there's a lot there i think i think that the second half is great it's not as great as the, f the first half the middle of the movie couldn't really possibly be topped as much as i think there is like great like substance in the in parts of the second half great scenes moments that i really loved it just wasn't like as captivating or enrapturing in the in quite the same way as the first half. And on the other hand, you know, I respect so much about the filmmaking of this movie, but I, that I can't help to give it a lot of the benefit of the doubt and say like, well, you know what? Like I also appreciate the risk in a way that the two halves make it what it is. I think that what unites both halves perhaps is first and foremost, a sense of life whether it's extremely painful or euphoric you know i think that contradiction is the center of the movie my problem specifically with the second half is there's not as much conflict in this character i have a question why we're telling this specific story and latching on to this character rather than somebody else who is more closely related with the first half the first half builds up something so emotionally devastating that the second half seems to try to make some sort of catharsis out of it and it's so difficult to do that, that I don't think it can even achieve what it sets out to do, like, possibly. But it actually doesn't do a bad job in that it falls just short of this, because I think it could have veered into worse territory where it's, like, explaining to you what it is. Where at least I feel like it leaves you with not all the answers. It just can't exceed that grasp, I think. But I also appreciate that the film tried to answer that question, like, where do we go from here? And maybe he didn't do it in a way that was as captivating as the best parts of the first half. Yeah. But I think that he mostly achieves that. I think I would want to watch this movie, like, a little down the road. Just to see if maybe it makes sense to connect things, or maybe if it doesn't. 
I'm a little torn in that some parts of this movie are like absolutely like God tier and then others are, you know, I, I like them <laughs> very much. I don't know if it mixed perfectly, but I still like love this movie. One of the most exciting filmmakers working and every year that he makes a movie, it will be one of my most anticipated of the year. I'm having a hard time piecing together these two halves of the movie and they don't feel like they totally fit, but this is a Trey Arbor Schultz movie and it is on another level compared to other films. And so it still gets a nine out of 10. I have some conflicted feelings about this film, but do I love it as much as other 10s this year? The answer is yes. It's not a 10 because it's a perfect movie. It's not a perfect movie. No. It's a 10 to me because it is that memorable. You may feel conflicted about it, but there will be things that you need. You just need to see what Trey Edward Schultz is like fucking doing here. You just have to go see that. If you don't like when cameras spin around, don't watch the movie. You just close get, your eyes. You can get down with that and watch it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I, I've actually have a pun for this outro, but... <laughs>